From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, good afternoon. Uh, 21 minutes after the hour on the seventh day of April. Uh, the reason I'm uh, tagging this with a date, I don't do that every day. Uh, the reason I'm doing it today is because we're going to talk about current events. And I tag it because maybe in a week this story will change. And so I don't want somebody listening to the podcast uh, two weeks from now going, well, those guys are out of date. That, well, that happened two weeks ago. I wish it would go out of date. Uh, I'm afraid this is an ongoing theme we've been dealing with, Mac. But you go ahead. Um, so, um, and, and I want to make this perfectly clear. First of all, um, if you've got young children listening Um, you may have to explain some of this. And quite frankly, that's the kind of parents we ought to be. I don't think we should necessarily. Here's the way I raised my kids. I did not shelter them from things. I just made them promise me that if we watched a GP-rated movie or PG, that either I'd watch it with them and then they could talk and ask questions, or I would have seen the movie, they could watch it, and then they'd come and we'd talk about it. Okay. And so uh, if you've got young kids in the room, that's what I hope you do. We're going to be talking about a very delicate subject today. And that's religious rights. Now, you would think that that wouldn't be anything that a kid couldn't listen to, that that's a uh, G-rated conversation. But here's the problem. Who is trying to destroy our religious rights? Is it another religion? No, 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 no. Is it the Democrats or some other legislative body, Republicans? No. Is it the president? No. There's only one group trying to destroy your religious rights and that's the lgbt question mark group so for those of you that just rolled your eyes and said i want to listen i don't want to listen to another darn program about gay rights i'm tired of it you know what i'm tired of it too can we switch the topic and talk about religious freedom because the accuser who runs this lgbt question mark movement now remember i'm not talking about the sinner i'm talking about the sin Tom and I don't agree on gay marriage and things like that. And that's one of the reasons that we do these shows, because he doesn't agree with me and I don't agree with him, and that's fine. I'm not talking about people. I'm talking about the organization of the LGBT question mark movement and your and my First Amendment rights. And there couldn't be any better story. And by the way, we planned on talking about this, what, two days ago? Mm Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, last night, KCCI breaks this story, and now it's all over the national news. And so here we're talking about it today. By the way, phone lines are open, 244-0077. I will treat you with respect should you disagree with us. No condemnation, no judgment. Your voice is open here. If you're listening and you are gay, I will not beat you up, and I won't let Tom do it either. Okay. Your voice is important in this conversation. Maybe it would be nice for someone who is gay to call up and say, I hate what the LGBT question mark movement is trying to do with religious freedoms. I'd love it if somebody would call up and say that. Someone who is gay. 244-0077-515 is the number. We're going to talk about this for the rest of the hour. So there's a young man, and his name is, um, I didn't write it down. I got to go find it. His name is Tyler, um, and he has been a volunteer coach and substitute teacher at Dowling High School. And nobody knew, or at least nobody talked about the fact, that Tyler McKibben, M-C-C-U-B-B-I-N, is married to... Engaged, I heard. Engaged? Engaged. Okay. Uh, He has a a ring on his left finger. So, of course, I guess engagement do, too. Yeah. Uh, And by the way, I have have sent a message to Tyler inviting him on any show. Now, obviously, he's not going to make it today, but I've invited him on any show. 
and he will be treated with no condemnation, no judgment, nothing but I just want to hear his heart. Mm -hmm. I want, I, I think it's important as Christians that we listen to people's hearts. So here's what happened. Tyler has been a volunteer and a substitute teacher at Dowling High School, and I think it's been for a couple of years or something. I didn't hear in the story, but probably sound like it'd been for a while. Um, one of the classes that he's been substitute teaching for, the uh, regular teacher is gone on an extended maternity leave and is not planning on coming back for the rest of this school year. Mm -hmm. Now that's not that long. That's April and May, so right, eight right. weeks. Mm -hmm. So, according to McKibben, and the reason I say that is because Dowling has not verified that. And you got to remember, when you listen to my show, you're listening to an old school journalist. I try not to make assumptions. I try not to say, well, Dowling High School offered him a contract to teach for the rest of the year. No, that's what Tyler said. I don't doubt that, but it hasn't been confirmed from Dowling yet. And even he says that he heard that unofficially from one individual that was in a position of authority. Right. There was no official extension of, of a contract or a job offer. Uh, and I think the human resources in their due diligence. And these days, Mac, you, you've been in business. You know, I've been in business. What one of the things that you do is you check people out, not just with their resumes. And sometimes they'll give you some references that sometimes won't sell you anything you that now go these days on social media and you do some back and forth checking people like to put their live story up on facebook and all yeah. of this stuff that i obviously don't care much about and participate in i know you do more than i but uh yeah it, it, this is what happens they check them out on social media uh and lo and behold it discovered what you're going to talk about. Yeah. Now, and I want to make this so clear, because tonight when you turn on the local news, or tomorrow morning when you read the local newspaper, I'm sorry to my fellow journalists out there, but this is true. And I, you may not admit it, but it's true. Everybody's going to spin this a certain way. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how that's done. Um, we do have some sources that are unidentified who have said that Dowling offered him the job uh, before they did the background checks and so therefore he's been hired and he has rights or has he been hired does he have rights okay I'm not gonna do that to you I'm I not... have it on good authority that Mitt Romney has not paid his taxes yeah go ask Mitt <laughs> yeah. yeah you know what we're talking about there Harry Reid came out and did that in the middle of the campaign and then later on admitted he he didn't know anything <laughs> no well he didn't win did he <laughs> he's just a liar um so so Tyler McKibben feels like he was being offered a job at Dowling as an instructor they went out and did their background checks <clears throat> and discovered that Tyler uh, is engaged to a person of same sex. And that was uh, apparently, they said, pretty obvious on Facebook. Um, I looked at his Facebook page and, and, yeah, it looked like that. But it wasn't, it wasn't yucky or anything. I mean, he's, just a, he's a nice guy. Yeah. I really think he's a nice man. Yeah. And he's obviously a very good teacher and coach. Well, we don't know that. But, I mean, let's assume that. But Dowling High School is a Catholic high school. It doesn't get your money as a taxpayer. It gets all of its money from national grants, from the Catholic Church Foundation, and from the students that pay tuition. Okay? It is a religious organization. And if anybody wants to doubt that or argue that, I'd love to hear you. I'd love to hear you tell me that this is not a religious organization, so therefore this isn't a religious rights issue. They said, whoa, we, we can't bring someone on as a staff member who obviously lives outside of the... What's, how, what's the nicest in an, way in to a, put in it? In an openly gay lifestyle. There's, you mean... If a guy is going to hide out without mentioning any names and, and, and you know, pretends to be one thing he's not uh, and he does it well, 
you can't expect them to do it. But when somebody, and these days it's becoming more and more popular, to actually not only be that way, but 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 boast about it, brag about it, put it on Facebook, uh, march in a march, uh, you know, take out a flag, you know, fly the uh, the rainbow uh, LGBT flag outside your door. Uh, this is becoming more and more apparent, and this, as you're saying, Mac, flies directly in the face of the Catholic and the and the Christian teachings. Um, you know, one of the things that you know you and I have not agreed on. We, we talked about, you know, well, it should have been left at gay unions. And, and uh, in fact, I had a fellow over at the club yesterday, a very smart guy, and he said, if we'd only given in to him on the gay unions and drawn the line there, we wouldn't have had this trouble now. Well, I mm. didn't say anything, but I disagree with that. I, and, and I don't think just because they get the Supreme Court this summer, Mac, and I think the odds are very high, the Supreme Court is going to come down and nullify state laws all over the country in regards to the prohibitions about gay marriage. Absolutely. And at that point, it still is not going to end this thing. Any more than electing Barack Obama ended racial uh, uh, strife right. in this country. Some people voted for him thinking that we put race behind us, and it did only the opposite. You cannot give these people any kind of capitulation and expect them to be satisfied. It never, never has happened in my lifetime. All right, and, and you say these people, and I'm not telling you you can't say that. I'm going to say the accuser. Well, and that is where I'm going with this, because ultimately these people are an area of rebellion, Mac. And that's why I have, when they say, well, what does it hurt your marriage when two gay guys who love each other get married in the state of Iowa, how is that impacting on your marriage? And that doesn't answer the question at all. One, the answer is found for me as a Christian in the Bible. And, and I know they love to trot out Leviticus and, and a lot of other things in the Old Testament, but I told a man just the other day, I said, it, Leviticus doesn't bother me as much as Paul's inspired writings in the first chapter. You mentioned that you were studying Romans. Yeah. The first chapter of Romans, Paul talks about this not being just a periphery, but a core sin that other areas of darkness and sin spring out of. And to me, that says that regardless of how much indoctrination we give the young kids in our public schools, it is still going to be an abomination in God's sight. And so at that point, these people, and I'm talking about the advocates for this the group. The LGBTQ question mark movement. Those people are in rebellion, and the ultimate rebellion is not against guys like you and me or, or oh. any flesh and blood, but it is against their creator God. And that's where I think we need to make ourselves stand up because this nation was created as a republic under the auspices that God you know, revealed himself and gave us certain rights from the outset. And this was a nation that was founded under God. And I think that when we define ourselves with honoring and sanctifying uh, a union as a holy marriage, just as a man and a woman is, we are taking a giant step away from that protection that was accorded us in our founding. Now, that's how I see it. And you're, I think you're right. I mean, you're right. All right, so... Uh, your voice is, I want to hear it, 244-0077. I did post something on Facebook about this. I have currently 41, 47, I have 42 comments. I'm going to read some of those, and we're going to talk about this. This is a political conversation. I wish it was a Muslim baker that turned down a, 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 a Christian uh, who wanted a cake made that said, Jesus is my king. Well, now, you knew that a Muslim baker had thrown out uh, uh, people. Oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll, and, we'll and we'll talk about that. It isn't just a gay issue. It just happens to be that's the top story here on The View from a Pew. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wondershide. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the service manager. Marketing director and client relations manager. Everything that we do 
is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a life. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. If you sit in the back pew or the front pew, it's your voice we want to hear. The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, uh, 22 before the top of the hour, uh, Salem Radio Network News, and then Michael Mudloff. Uh, the opinions uh, voiced on this are not necessarily those of the Truth Network. They're not ne if, if Tom says something, that isn't necessarily my opinion. Uh, I certainly, uh, he doesn't claim everything I say, uh, our advertisers or anybody like that. This is America. This is a talk show. It's on a Christian radio station. We talk about some of the tough stuff. I think we should, don't you? I mean, we got preaching and teaching. We got, if you want to listen to some incredible contemporary Christian music, 1071. I mean, there's lots of choices. This is what we're talking about today. A young man by the name of Tyler McCubbin uh, uh, volunteered his time at Dowling High School. Uh, an opportunity came for him to be uh, hired. He obviously is a qualified teacher with a teaching certificate. Yeah, you assume. Yeah. He went through a process and he was denied. He claims he was denied because they discovered on social media that he lived in a same-sex uh, marriage uh, a relationship. And, and as you say, Mac, we only have his word for that. Uh, Dowling has, uh, at this point, chosen not to make a statement. We don't know how many candidates they had for the position. We don't know what other factors. And this may not even been a factor. He said it was. But there are... You know, we were talking about this the other day, Mac. There are people now that work in corporate America that say openly, well, my position is secure because I've made it known to management that I'm homosexual. Yeah. Uh, and they don't dare fire me. Now, I'm not I'm not making this up. I've heard this. Oh, I know. A and and so they think their position is secured and much the same way if this guy wants a job. And, and I don't know. But I, let, let's speculate the other way for a minute. Let's say he wanted this job and he was being turned down. Well, now he announces to the world at a time where 
hypersensitivity, mm -hmm. not only here, but in Indiana and all over this country, is going on on this issue. We, we, we've, tra we've transitioned from the hypersensitivity of race that was with us a few months ago, and now we've gone to the hypersensitivity of homosexuality, and he makes a claim that I'm not hired because I'm gay guy. Now, this may be a, a false claim, and Dowling may be caught in the middle and not quite know how to address it. I'm, I'm just guessing. Let, let's assume it could be either way, because all we have at this point is his word on this. Well, I, my criticism of Dowling would be you already had this man in front of students. You already had him coaching. You liked what he did. Okay? Are you telling me that a substitute a non-paid substitute and a non-paid no W2 uh, He's being paid for his substitute teaching, I would assume, though, Mac. I, th I think his volunteerism ended at the coaching, track okay. coaching, and okay. I think he was being paid as a substitute teacher. Now, your question should be, is there any kind of, of uh, verification checking process uh, going on for their substitute teachers? Right. And there may not be. And that, that's a travesty. That may not be. Yeah. And they may, it, may, it may be far worse. They may have... Uh, you know, uh, convicted pedophiles or somebody else yeah. substitute teaching if they don't do a verification and a checking process on this thing. All right. So uh, before we get to some of the posts, let's go to the phone, because what would a day be without Frank? You know, a, a day with Frank is just a better day. Uh, Frank, what are your thoughts on this? This is true. All days with me are great. Yeah. So says um, who? Well, my uncle in the early 1970s was trying to garner employment with the U.S. Post Office. And he was uh, trying to get uh, the biblical Sabbath of sundown Friday and Saturday off as a part of that employment. And uh, he was discriminated against in the early 70s on, on religious views. And he took his case to, uh, you know, I suppose the ACLU at the time or the, the Iowa uh, equal, unemployment, or equal Employment Office, whatever the things, that, the avenues you had to seek uh, at the time. And he was basically told that he had no rights as, as an employee, so what he should have done is accepted the job and then demanded the Sabbath off, because then he would have had rights as an employee under the federal government. But because he was not employed, he had no rights, therefore they could discriminate against him based on he wanted the Sabbath off. Now, I don't know if there's a similar thing applying here, but if, 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 if he wasn't employed by Dowling, then in essence he had no rights as an employee. Yeah, but I think Tom's right. I think he would have been paid something as a substitute teacher. I, I can see a volunteer as a coach. I think he was a soccer coach. I thought it was track, but it doesn't matter. I, I think he, my, my impression was that he was a paid substitute teacher and he was a volunteer coach. Yeah. And by the way, I've reached out to Tyler. Uh, I've asked him to please come on the radio with us. There'd be no condemnation. There's going to be no judgment about his choice of, of lifestyle. I'm not interested in that. I want to hear his heart. Now, you mentioned yesterday on the show, did you have some sort of recording, uh, cell phone recording or something of this? That's on a different uh, topic that we're going to talk about another time. That is a cell phone recording that came from the uh, Governor Branstad's oh. uh, uh, summit on LGBT question mark. Well, I was getting ready to get really upset because you told me to be prepared to get, to get Well, that this outraged. if this we get into that and we get some more details on that, this is an upsetting subject because it is exposing our children in this in this state uh, to uh, areas of. You could call it pornography, Frank. I mean, it is, it, it's really hardcore. And I, uh, I found a fellow I know a little bit who a parent and daughter had been subjected to this under the guise that they were going to learn how to deal with bullying. And it turned out to be a very explicit pornographic session. He checked the governor's office. The governor doesn't have any direct ties, they say now. It was started under Vilsack, carried under Culver. Uh, Branstead had not taken the name off there. He hasn't disassociated himself with it. But uh, I hope we can get uh, this gentleman, maybe his daughter, on for another show because this is another, it's another chapter, it's another part of what we're talking about, um, and it's another thing that calluses and corrupts our, our young people. It's, it's aimed at young people. So 
Well, <laughs> obviously they have to recruit, uh, just like cigarette uh, tobacco companies. Uh, there's no doubt that the homosexual community has to has to recruit. Uh, but but what happened to Tyler? What's the end of this story? That that he didn't get hired. He's filing a discrimination suit. Well, we don't know that, Frank. We, we he he apparently thinks he's been turned down for the position, and he is alleging this is the reason. I don't. I haven't heard anything about any kind of suit being filed now. Whether I'm, I'm assuming that he went to KCCI with his story. Yeah. Uh, or maybe his uh, fiance, uh, his male fiance, went to somebody that probably knows him is very close to him, if not he himself, went to KCCI. And this is a hot issue right now, Frank. Uh, you know it is. We, we listen to any news outlet right now, and they've got their own angle. Well, well it, doesn't this come up to the point of employers now have the right to examine your social media when, as, as part of the terms of employment? Well, I, I think it does, and I think that is what's being done. I mean, that's public knowledge, and I think it's, uh, even if it's not in writing, I think people are doing that as a matter of course. Now, Carrie Smith just said something to me on Facebook, and I think this is important. What about the teachers that live in relationships outside of marriage? Are they welcome to substitute teach? Are they welcome to volunteer their time? Are they welcome to be employees at Dowling? Because if that's the case, I, I got to call foul on Dowling. I got to call hypocrisy. You, 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 I'm sorry. Adultery is no worse than, than, than homosexuality. That's my book. You may disagree, Tom, and I've already said that we don't agree on well, the, everything. Well, the penalties in the Old Testament, if we go by the Old Testament, uh, were, were similar. I mean, they were, they were to stone both the man and the woman if they were called an, an adulterer. If he was cheating on his wife with a woman, they were supposed to be stoned. But I, again, I'm going back to the New Testament. You remember where the woman was caught in front of Jesus, and he who was without sin cast that first stone. He didn't say, oh, fine, go continue living that lifestyle. He said, go and sin no more. Right. And I think that's the point that people are missing. Well, and, and if in fact, Frank, hold on. Uh, if in fact there are other employees who are not living a repentant, uh, 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 of course, nobody's sinless, you know, but I don't know. This is a sticky wicket. This really is. And I can go either way because I feel for Tyler. I really do. Uh, we'll talk about this when we come back live here on The View from a Pew. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can give these grandkids back, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We can help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hey. Psst. Let me let you in on a little secret. You ready? Always try to do business with people, not places. Especially if you seek honest Christian business people. And when it comes to my car, I really need to trust who's working on it. Now, my family is so blessed. A few years ago, we found a family-owned automobile repair shop that operates as a Christian business also. Open. Honest, reliable, trustworthy. It's Amco on Hickman Road in front of Kmart. And it's a family-owned Christian operating business. This family treats your car as if it was their car. Everything from oil changes to transmission repair and everything in between. So the next time you feel the need to be at peace with your choice of who you can trust with your car, give Amco on Hickman a chance to serve you. And tell them Max sent you. If you sit in the back view or the front view, it's your voice we want to hear. 
The phone lines are open, so call 244-0077. Now, here's J. Michael McCoy. All right, 10 minutes for the top of the hour. We're going to get right back into this. A uh, young man by the name of Tyler McCubbin uh, was a, a volunteer coach and a substitute teacher at Dowling High School. And the opportunity to become a permanent teacher came about, so he put his application in. Tyler says that he got a verbal acceptance from someone, some power to be. Uh, Dowling has not confirmed that. Upon looking in his background and his social networking and all that stuff, they found that he was engaged and in a same-sex relationship, and Dowling withdrew the offer. Religious freedom? Bigotry? Where I, This is a mess. This is a mess. What, why, was he able, why was he allowed to substitute teach without any background? And is, it, Carrie Smith asked a great question. Is, is there a teacher there having an affair? Or is there a single person working there? I mean, single as in not married, who's having a, uh, 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 a sexual relationship with either same sex or the other? I mean, I, I'm sorry. Sin is sin. But you can't say, well, this one's not as bad as the other one. Because the way I read the book, the book says the only sin that is worse than any other is blasphemy. Frank, go ahead. Well, there's plenty of laws to protect Tyler and his employment situation. But there, the, it's going to come down to proving that Dowling refused to hire him based on his homosexual preference. So they're going to have to find something where, where, where Dowling... Uh, denied him, uh, you know, for, for other than just, well, you know, we, we don't like you or something, you know. I mean, in yeah. other words, they're going to have to prove that it was because of his sexual preference, and I think that's going to be uh, a hard thing to prove. Well, you think that the, the the burden of proof, let's say he files suit, you think the burden of proof is on Dowling to... No, I think the burden of proof should be on him. Well, and see, I, I it's that story's got to be coming from him or somebody very close to him to blow this whistle. And again, Max says he's very empathetic to this man. I, I don't know him at all. But at this point, I'm willing to give Dowling some of the benefit of the doubt. And I'm willing to say that he has tried to make this a public issue to gain whatever advantage he thinks he can, either well, monetary, uh, employment, or otherwise. I mean, look, look at the fella that, um, uh, that Branstead's been fighting with. Uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, uh, but he's been filing a suit and ma- dragging it out, costing the state hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Oh, no, no, we're up to like $700,000. Yeah, I say hundreds of thousands yeah. of dollars. And, uh, and his allegation is simply that you fired me because I was gay. The Branstead people said, we didn't know you were gay. Well, that's what I think, and, and I am, and so, therefore, I've got a suit. Roxanne Conlon takes it on, and they just stick it to the state. Um, the burden of proof should be on this fellow. I agree with you, Frank, but I think in this day and age, I think the burden of proof comes back on Dowling. Well, the, the burden of proof should always be in a court of law on the accuser. The innocent doesn't have to prove his uh, his his guilt or innocence. It's well, he shouldn't. Up, it's it's up to the the accusers and the people who's defending the accuser to prove that the accused done something wrong. But not in this day and age. And, and, and I, I, you know, Eric Holder's liable to show up here at the FBI, and we're liable to have an investigation. <laughs> Ferguson all over uh, mm. Dowling. Frank, thanks for calling in. Uh, who's who? I've got another line blinking. Pierre. Uh, Pierre, you're live in Max World. How are you doing today, Pierre? Hi. My this is Pierre from up Northwest, your favorite pagan that I talk to on Facebook occasionally. Yeah, Pierre's a friend of mine on Facebook. We have wonderful conversation. He's incredibly intelligent and kind, but he is a pagan. He believes yeah. in witchcraft and things like that. But I always, I always like, because he always has a lot of respect for my opinions, which are really Jesus freaky like. Yeah, that's true. I, res- I respect that. My whole thing here is, Born and raised Iowan, when is common sense going to be involved in this? My two points are, this is a private religious school. And number two, people pay to have their children to go to this school. If this was a public school, I'd be all over it. But, you know, this, you know they, they, this, due to this being a private school, they have their standards, they have their beliefs. As a pagan, I wouldn't expect to be hired there. Because I am a social, you know, I put it on on social media who I am. And I think that's what this gentleman has done. He yeah. has made a choice to put this out on social media 
And therefore, since he's made that choice, he needs to accept the responsibility of what his choices have been. Uh, Pierre, wonderful comment. Uh, I love you, brother. Thank you very much for calling in. If, if It was hard to understand. Uh, Pierre, who's a pagan, uh, a witch, uh, said he wouldn't expect to be hired at Dally. I thought that was a very sensible comment. Private school. Now, if this was a public school, I, I, I'd be on Tyler's side all the way. And I'm not saying I'm not on Tyler's side a little bit here. Well, you sound like you are. I'm very skeptical of him. I think it's he or somebody very close to him that has made this a public spectacle, and I think it's uh, it's injurious to Dowling. I think it's it's potentially unfair based on what the facts of the matter are. They haven't come out and stated them, and I'm not ready to give him, you know, full card blanche at this point just because he made this allegation. Uh, Dean says to me on Facebook, FYI for you on Dowling, they have a document that you sign that has a list of items that you will not do. Don't remember the specifics, but it was more often known as a morality clause. I'll tell you this. The church that I go to, Lutheran Church of Hope, I am not a W-2 employee there. I don't want to be a W-2 mm -hmm. employee there. Uh, that way, what I say on this radio station isn't a reflection on right. them. All right. right. But I, 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 I facilitate a couple Bible studies. I am involved in Alpha as a host. Uh, I'm in, um, uh, I don't want to call them leadership positions, but I'm certainly in a, some disciple positions. Right. Um, I had to sign a document which said I don't abuse, I don't use drugs, I don't abuse alcohol. Well, that was easy because I don't drink it mm -hmm. anymore. That I would not have an adulterous affair. That I would not live with someone outside of the bonds of marriage. That I would not uh, uh, be involved in any homosexuality. Um, and, and I'm a volunteer. Mm -hmm. So if a church can do that with a volunteer, why can't a, a Catholic high school do that with a teacher? So yeah, um, that's they, where I tell you, I, I'm, uh, I'm both places here well, on this. Well, I, I don't know why, you, why you're so much not on this issue. I mean, because it is just another chapter in the assault on our creator. This is coming from the enemy, Mac. I, I, I can't... We could open up Romans and we could read Paul's inspired writings on that first chapter of Romans. We can see that that homosexuality, the burning of man for man and woman for woman, is a core sin and other sins spring out of it. And it is an abomination, the Old and New Testament to God, and it's yesterday, today, and eternity. Forever. And, and where Tom and I are on the same page is I'm so tired of the LGBT movement, not the people. The movement. Well, you say, Mac, the people are the movement. Well, I know a lot of people who are gay. And they don't like the way the LGBT pushes. They don't like the fact that the Gortz House lost their ability to have marriages there. They, they don't like the cake baking thing. And they won't like this either. They won't like it at all. But what the accuser's doing in his minions is trying to push God out of society. They're trying to force... And by the way, if this happens at a Catholic school, next it'll be a Catholic church. Then it'll be a Lutheran church. And then... It'll be your church. Right. We'll continue talking about this. Find somebody you can't forgive. Forgive them as you will be forgiven yourself. I love you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.